excited to be in the house of the living God. Anything is possible. Amen. Anything can happen today. Doesn't matter how you walked into this house. I know that God is able today to raise you up. Hallelujah. And breathe life into you today. Amen. Hey, what a good place to be. It is so awesome to see Brother Keith Marshall in the house today. Amen. What a blessing already to start the service with Brother Marshall being with us today. Amen. I tell you what, we're going we're gonna to invite the presence of the Lord here. I feel him here already. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's invite his presence. And once we do, let's, let's give him our sacrifice of praise. Amen. Let's pray together. Precious Father, we come before you right now in the powerful name of Jesus. Lord, we invite your presence here today, God. We ask you to move like you've never moved before. Lord, I ask you to give us an ear to hear, an open heart to receive your word. Increase our faith. Bless this your people today, God. Let them not leave the same way they came in today, God, but fill them and thrill them and endure them with power from on high. In Jesus' powerful name, why don't you shout it? Amen. Let's worship together this morning. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind? of ways it was my dream till I met you I was breathing but not alive all my failures I tried it was my turn, Jesus, till I met you, yeah, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious state. Jesus. Yeah. 
sing it with us, church. change the order of service and we're going to go to God in prayer. Prayer changes things. You may pray and you don't see anything change. I'm telling you you're hitting. You're hitting that rock, that hard thing that's in front of you today. With every blow that you hit with that hammer of prayer it's getting weaker and it's getting weaker and finally one day you'll have a breakthrough. Don't give up. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to exercise that power today that lies within every one of us today. We're going to go to our God in prayer. And we're going to ask everybody today to remember the following. Amen. Let's remember at, at Anthony and Ashley Brown, Doug and Lisa Bryant, Wayne Bryant, my wife Deborah Burton, Cecil Euler, brother and sister Eubanks, sister Bundy today, Bill and Brenda Gustin, sister Shirley Dalton, Keith Marshall. Brother, I tell you what, you bless me beyond measures. This is a, this is a sacrifice for this man to be here today. A sacrifice to be here. 
I didn't have to make that sacrifice. I didn't have to work that hard to get here. But he wanted to be in God's presence today, and he's here. Man. Sister Robin Bryant, Bob and Barb Murnahan, Barbara Martin, Gina McCabe, Lori Ritchie, David Seitz, Jim Wentz Sr., Buddy Hamlin, and Gary Krieger. Maybe you're here today, and you've got a need in your body today. I'll tell you what. Today's a good day. Today's the day to leave here different. If you need prayer today, I'm going to encourage you to get out of your seat. You got to get up just like the Israelites did when they wanted that manna. You got to get up and you got to come and get it. Exercise your faith today. We have men of God here that will lay hands on you according to the scripture. So if you want prayer today, the ball's in your court. What are you going to do? If you want prayer, we're going to encourage you to come up. And while you're coming, we're going to go ahead and pray over these needs and the needs of the church today. Precious Father, we come before you right now in the wonderful name of Jesus. Lord, we give you thanks today, God, for your goodness and your mercy, which endures forever. Father God, we ask you to touch every need that's been mentioned today, the hurting, the sick, the inflicted, the brokenhearted today. God, we ask that you touch and heal bodies, perform miracles, heal their bodies today, God. Break every deliverance, every chain that's holding them back today. Lord, we love you today for being our King and Savior and Redeemer, for never leaving us nor forsaking us. God, I ask you to touch these needs in Jesus' name, to touch the sick, to raise them up today. Let this be the day of healing and deliverance for them. In Jesus' name. service is taking place this Friday on 512 in Cincinnati at the Tree of Life Church pastored by Joel Urshan. If you have an opportunity, you want to be there, go. Amen. Go. It will bless you. Amen. It's going to be a great and powerful time. Our junior and senior high youth camp registrations are now open. If you want any kind of information about this, it's, it's on our www ohiodistrict.com you can find all the information you need there how to register what it's going to cost be there if you can amen amen everyone say may 28th 
I'll say it one more time like you mean it, May 28th. That's Pentecost Sunday, amen? Amen. We are going to have our very first guest evangelist, Brother Andrew. Let me find his name here. Predegrace. Predicast. Predicast. Brother, you're going to have to get some people in here got Smith. Brother Bob or something, I tell you, Predicast. We are, we are excited to meet this brother, and we are more excited what he's going to be bringing with him. This man is anointed of God, amen. Him and his wife, Kayla, he'll be preaching, his wife will be singing, and God's going to fill people with the Holy Ghost that day. Hallelujah. Make sure you bring somebody here with you. Come expecting a great time. Don't come here and just sit. Come and enjoy the presence of God. Amen. We are so glad. Amen. That everyone's here today. We also want to announce brother and sister Azalini are here. Amen. Our pastor. Give him a war. Hallelujah. Ain't this great? Ain't this wonderful? After service today, they are going to go have lunch at the armory. And we're letting anybody and everybody know where they're eating at today. Amen. If you want to go in, surprise them and fellowship a little bit with them. If you want to eat lunch at the Armory Say today, amen, be a good place to eat. You'll be in good company. I encourage you to go and eat lunch with the pastor and his wife and their family. You want to get to know them a little bit, rub elbows, talk a little bit, get to know them. And better yet, them get to know you. A good opportunity for fellowship. So that's going to be right after service. You get hungry enough, you might pray for shortening. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, hey, it's good heavenly food here. So we're going to try to change the order of service. We're going to sing another song, I do believe, and we're going to worship God in spirit and truth. Let's worship together. Praise the Lord, greater faith. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah! 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 Praise the Lord. What a day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice. Let's be glad in it. Hallelujah. Woo. We're going to take our tithes and offering this morning. In Matthew, 20, Matthew 6, Jesus says, Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where's your, tre where's your treasure this morning? For years I struggled with, with this. I did not make God my treasure. I did not make the church my treasure. And I had to teach myself that God is my treasure. Where's your treasure at this morning? Baskets in the front. We've got the basket in the back. If you're watching online, there's ways online to give. Let's pray this morning. Lord, woo! We give you praise for this offering. We give you praise for these tithes. We give you reference for you are God and you are God alone and there is no God formed beside you. Lord, we declare blessings over these tithes. Blessings over this offering. We declare power over these tithes. We declare power over these offerings. We declare greater works and greater faith through these tithes and offering in Jesus' name. Woo! Hallelujah. Give. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, greater faith. Y'all sleeping on us? Praise the Lord, greater faith. I don't know if you realize what kind of church you came into this morning. There's a lot of churches in Ireland, a lot of churches in our tri-state. This ain't your average church. This is a Holy Ghost filled, spirit filled. Tongue talking, one God believing church. Elizabeth asked me last night, she said, Dad, she said, I want to go to church with one of my friends tomorrow. I said, uh, Well, so what do they believe in? She didn't really know. She kind of told me a little bit. I said, Let me tell you what we believe, sweetheart. Nine years old. I said, When we go down to the water, we don't go down in three separate names. I said, We go down in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak in tongues. We believe one God, one faith, and one baptism. That's what we believe. The truth is hard to find nowadays, amen. So if you believe what I just told you, I want you to worship with us. Sing this song with us this morning, amen.
Son of man, he's coming back 
that praise to the Lord. Woo! Because he's coming back again. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Woo! He's the Son of Man. He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and He's the Omega. He's the Savior. He's the mighty God. He's the everlasting Father. He's the Prince of Peace. He's God with us. He's God in you. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise to you, the one, the only true God. Woo! Hallelujah. Man, God is good. God is good. All the time. Who said that? All the time, baby. All the time. Five months ago today, God is good. God is good all the time. Five months ago on this day, December 7th, I had my pacemaker changed that morning. I came to church that night. It was my fourth pacemaker. And it was a good service and it was a blowout service and God is powerful. And I knew he would watch over me. And after service, Brother Jerry and I were called in the office and we were told that things were changing at greater faith. That the Cheryls were leaving. And it was a kick in the gut. It's been five months. And we've prayed. And we've prayed. And we've prayed. And we've battled. And we've struggled. And we've fought. And we've never quit. And we've never given up. Five months. And this is the day I have been waiting for. It gives me great pleasure to bring our pastor, Brother Venny Azzolini. Woo! Give him some worship. Give him some praise. Give him some honor. Let's give that hand clap to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. He's worthy. He's been so faithful. He's been so faithful. He's been so faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Why don't you just let a shout out? Come on. Why don't you just let your faith. There's something shifting in this service right now. Come on. This church is stepping into a new season today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And in this worship team, do an awesome job today. Amen. 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 Welcome, everybody. We're so delighted that you have chosen to be in the house of the Lord with us today. We're so thankful that you are here. Uh, I do want to take a moment today before we get into the Word uh, just to express honor and thanksgiving to this incredible church board here at Greater Faith. These men have led, they have labored, and they have been, you know what they've been? They've been keepers. They've been keepers. When David went to fight at Ziklag, the only reason he could go is because there was keepers at home. And these men have been keepers of the faith in this season that you have been in. And I think that we should give them a great hand clap today and give them on. And 
and it's been such an honor to get to know each of them and to work with them these last few weeks and I want to thank all of you for your vote of confidence in me and in my family and I will tell you we we are just as surprised as you are <laughs> amen but we do feel so strongly and we can talk about it another day but the Lord has confirmed in so many ways that we are absolutely here in the will of God amen hallelujah and we know that God has great things in store for greater faith apostolic church and for the city of Ironton if you believe that give the Lord another hand clap would you Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you'd go in the word of the Lord with me today to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 2. Deuteronomy, chapter 2. And I'm going to read to you verses 2 and 3. Deuteronomy, chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. When you have it, say amen. Amen. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Look at your neighbor, say, It's been long enough. Turn you northward. And that's what I want to preach to you about today. Because greater faith, it's been long enough. And I want to preach to you, turn you northward. Are you ready? All right, let's pray together. Jesus, we love you. Lord, we're so thankful to be in your house today with your people. Lord, we are so grateful for your faithfulness and your goodness towards us. Lord, for keeping your hand upon this precious congregation, upon this precious church. And I pray today that you would bless this inauguration service, Lord, as this great assembly steps into a new season. Lord, I speak faith into this atmosphere right now. I speak expectation and vision into the hearts and minds of this congregation today. In the name of Jesus Christ, pour out of your spirit upon all flesh in Jesus' name. And we will not fail to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give the Lord some thanks in advance today for what he's going to do in this service? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Praise God. You may be seated. Praise God. Doesn't it feel good in God's house today? Amen. When Moses sent out 12 spies to spy out the promised land, 10 came back with a negative report. And two men, Joshua and Caleb, Caleb, excuse me, came back with a good report. Because of the faithless report of the ten, the Lord exacted judgment on that generation and told them that they would never enter in to the promised land. The promised land was, of course, God's promise to the children of Israel. It was his intended purpose and destination for that congregation. You know God's got an intended purpose and destination for greater faith. Amen. Amen. Because of the hasty reaction of these ten, the Lord punished those that came back and had a bad report and said that there is no way that we can take the promised land and possess what God has promised to us. When the Lord brought judgment upon them, 
They tried to undo what they had done. The Lord said, you know, you've murmured for 40 years and I've provided. You've complained and you were never happy. And when your moment came to possess the promise, you were unwilling to move forward. He said, and now you're going to have to stay here. He said, you were afraid that if you moved into the promised land to fight the Canaanites and the, and the enemy that is currently inhabiting the land, you were afraid you would lose your sons and daughters. He said, but I'll tell you what. He said, you're going to stay here until every person that has murmured dies right here. And the very ones that you were fearful you would lose, they're going to move into the promised land without you. Mm. Timing matters to God. Mm. Timing matters. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Verses 43 and 44, I'm going to read it to you in the Amplified Version. I apologize, I didn't get this to you back there. I'll do better. It's my first Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> so I spoke to you, but you would not listen. Instead, you rebelled against the command of the Lord and acted presumptuously and went up into the hill country. Then the Amorites who lived in that hill country came out against you and chased you as bees do and struck you down in Seir as far as Hormah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because they did not recognize, realize, and respond with faith to the timing of God. Don't miss this. They went back into a cycle of waiting and wandering as God waited for some things to die before he brought them into promise. What are you trying to say, Brother Venny? Greater faith, this is your moment. This is your moment. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And your narrative from this day forward needs to be, we are going to take the land. We are going to move into promise. If you had a little doubt, if you had a little reservation, now's the time to lay that down and say, I may not have understood everything that happened. I may have some questions in my spirit, but I'm not going to be left behind. God, I'm going to give a good report because I'm standing in a God moment right now. Hallelujah. I remember coming here to preach to you on a Wednesday night. It was my first time here. And coming that night, I, Brother Jerry, I was just coming to fill a pulpit. <laughs> or so I thought. And I remember that morning in my office, the Lord brought me to a verse and that verse talked about the children of Israel being in their tents during a waiting season. And the verse said that as long as the cloud hovered above the tents, there was rest in the camp. And I came to you that night and I said, don't be restless. Don't be restless in this waiting season. Because soon and very soon, that cloud is going to move. Mm, hallelujah. Ironton, the cloud is moving. The cloud is moving, and the camp is moving forward. Now is the time to say, I am willing to take the stakes out of my tent because the season of stationary is over. The cloud is moving, and I'm not going to be left behind. Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Oh, halaba shandala mataya. Amen. Amen. A German scientist decided to do a study about a hypothesis that you probably have heard before. Have you ever heard this? When people get lost, they tend to walk in circles. Anybody ever heard that? And this is what they concluded. In one experiment, 15 volunteers blindfolded and outfitted with GPS receivers, tried to walk in a straight line across a large field. Most participants meandered this way and that way, occasionally walking in circles as small as 20 meters in diameter. Previously, some researchers had proposed that walking in circles could result from subtle differences in the strength or length of the two legs that would bias a person to veer toward the left or the right. But in Salman's experience, ex excuse me, experiment, most subjects showed no strong bias for leftward or rightward turns. Although subjects did have small differences in the strength of their left and right legs, the researchers found these differences did not correlate with their turning tendencies. And when the researchers exaggerated differences in leg length by adding a 12 millimeter thick sole to the volunteer's left or right shoe, they found no systematic effect on the tendency to veer left or right. No matter what your philosophy is, whether you lean a little left or you lean a little right. When you're lost, you're going to just walk in circles. Stay with me now. The study concluded that people walk in circles when they lack landmarks to guide them. Mm. We must know where we came from where we are, and where we are going. We must know who we are, whose we are, and where he is taking us. Oh, greater faith, this is a landmark service in Ironton, Ohio. You can look in the rear view mirror and see where we've been. You can look around you and see where we are right now. And before we leave here today, God is going to show us where we are headed. There is a landmark in front of us today. Hallelujah. There is a story in the Old Testament when the children of Israel passed over Jordan. How many of you are familiar? When they passed over Jordan, they made a memorial. They called it a memorial of stones. And the writer said, the reason we are building this memorial is so that when your sons and daughters come upon this memorial, they will ask, what mean ye by these stones? We have to know what our history is. Mm, that's our first landmark. Each and every one of us came out of Egypt. Egypt is symbolic of a life before God, a life in the world, a life in sin. The Bible says that each and every one of us were a slave to sin or a slave to the flesh. The Bible says God condemned sin in the flesh in the book of Romans. What's that mean? That means sin was your identity in Egypt. You were bound to it. You were in bondage to the world. And hear this, you could not save yourself. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4 read this way. 
But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Behind me is a place of deliverance. Behind each and every one of you was a moment in your life where God stepped into your story and said, you are bound by sin and you are a slave to this world. And God, the deliverer, our Savior, stepped in and said, I'm going to pull you out of a situation that you cannot save yourself from. You may have recognized that you were in bondage. You may have recognized that you were in sin but you were powerless to save yourself. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. We all needed a Savior, and it's the landmark of our past that stands behind us. We needed an advocate, an authority to intervene. First John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, Read, my little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Our first landmark is Egypt. Everybody say Egypt. Our next landmark is the wilderness. The Lord brought us out of sin. But when we come into the wilderness, remembering that it was him that led us there, it's where we die out to sin in us. Mm. When God brings us out of bondage, he brings us into the wilderness. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When we were in Egypt, the world was all around us. When we come into the wilderness, God pulls the world out of us. It's where a transformation begins to take place in the life of every believer. Transformation happens in the wilderness. I cannot will myself to be like Jesus. The Bible says they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. The wilderness is where we die out to our flesh. Mm. Your flesh will always despise the wilderness season. But before you run out of your wilderness too quickly, or you allow frustration to cause you to do something hasty, hear the preacher today. The wilderness is a safe place for your flesh to die. It may be a frustrating place, but it's a safe place because there's a boundary of protection around you in the wilderness. See, God knows that you can't fight your flesh and the adversary at the same time. So he hides you in a place where a transformation process can begin to take place in your heart and in your mind. The wilderness protects you from the enemy that wants to destroy you. And the only way for you to destroy yourself in the wilderness is to get out of the timing of God. Mm. So you will either die there because you refuse to die out to yourself or you will leave before it's time and give the enemy early access to your life. The wilderness is a place where God protects you. He provides for you and keeps you occupied. He lets time starve the desires of your flesh 
until you're ready for him to give you new desires. Many people never leave the wilderness. You need to hear me today. This is an important landmark, and we're going to move on in a minute. But some people get stuck in the wilderness and never leave there. Oh. They let frustration get the best of them. Mm. It is here where you can choose in the wilderness what kind of relationship you're going to have with God. Is this going to be a need-based relationship where you can know him but still be comfortable in your carnality? Where you can know him and have spiritual experiences with him and experience manna and provision outside of your tent but never want to leave the comfort of dependency? Or are you going to have a faith-based relationship with God? Mm. Numbers 13 and 30 said, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses. What's that mean? He said, calm down. Keep calm. Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Churches grow just like people do as individuals. When a church starts, it immediately starts bringing people out of bondage. There's growth as new people are born into the body of Christ. And then this new assembly of believers goes through a wilderness season. A place where God not only removes them from Egypt, but he removes Egypt from them. It's a place where God calls them unto himself. It's where his nature begins to take up residence inside of them. It's where double-mindedness and division withers and vision and unity flourishes. When a church is in a wilderness season, it feels like you're busy but not progressing, active but not fruitful, walking but with no purpose. <laughs> church, I can't say it enough to you today. Don't squander your wilderness season or you'll be doomed to repeat it just like a whole generation of people that were left there before they went into the promised land. You need to be ready because every wilderness generation receives at least one opportunity to move into promise. And we're not going to miss ours, greater faith. Mm. We are not going to miss this all. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this room right now. Greater faith as a church body, you have been in a wandering season. You've been active. You've been busy. You've been gathering. But without a set direction. But saints of God, I've come with a word for you today. You have compassed this mountain long enough. Long enough. It's time to turn you northward. It's time to stop walking in circles. It's time to stop meandering in the wilderness. Honey, because activity is not a direction. They compassed the mountain. They were active. They were busy. There was movement, but there was not a direction. But God has sent me here today to set a direction for greater faith. We are heading northward in Jesus' name. We are headed northward in Jesus' name. We are leaving doubt in the wilderness. We are leaving fear in the wilderness. We are leaving carnality in the wilderness. We are leaving Egypt in the wilderness. It's time to turn northward, saints. It's time to pursue the promises of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Ah. Praise God. Ah. The Bible says that without a vision, 
the people perish, and I'm closing. We've had blindfolds on for a little while. But I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost today that the scales are falling from our eyes right now. And there is vision that is coming to greater faith starting today. We're going to turn northward together. Let me tell you something. The promises of God, Brother Tarion, are just north of here. Just north of here, there is revival. Just north of here, there is healing in the land. Just north of here, there's deliverance in your city. Just north of here, there's an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We're turning northward together, Brother Burden. We have come past this mountain long enough. But today, greater faith, we are stepping over a transition in time. And we are moving into promise together. Come on, would you stand to your feet? Ah, just north of here, there is advancement and multiplication in Jesus' name. Just north of here is a narrative of victory. Just north of here, there are signs wonders and miracles greater faith you better get ready because people are going to be healed in every service that we have people are going to be delivered in every service that we have we have come past this mountain long enough ah, see there's got to be something that changes in your mindset and in your attitude today where you realize hey we're not just going to have a wait and see mindset anymore because the day is here and we can take the land we can take the promise will there be challenges yes are there giants yes but we are well able we are well able God has equipped you he has called you he has anointed you and we are going north in Jesus name John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not but for, for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Just north of here is abundant life. Just north of here, ah, the season of waiting is over. Uh, let me just prophesy to you for a moment and tell you there's going to be a revival of backsliders. Uh, there's going to be a revival of the missing. We got MI. The Lord told me there are MIAs in Ironton. People who used to be here. People who used to worship with you. People who used to attend faithfully. But they're missing in action. There's going to be a revival of MIAs in Ironton. Hallelujah. You desire to have life and life more abundantly. I'm going to invite you today to step out of your seat and come to the front and join us down here as a family, Greater Faith. And we're going to spend a few moments before we are dismissed and we are going to worship together. We're going to praise God together. We're going to get in one mind and one accord because today is a day of victory. Today is a day of victory for greater faith. Hallelujah. 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 Are you ready? Come on, let's worship. Hey, Jesus, I'll never forget.